This is Duke University. From the very beginning of patient history, language education has been used um, for exclusion and then to create and transmit inequities in Haiti. And actually, I want to insist that Haiti is not exceptional in that regard. Um, what Haiti does, because of its very dramatic history, it makes these issues even clearer and more stark. In Haiti, you have this very tiny elite, uh, which is overall um, French-speaking Christian, and many of, them, many of them with French or mulatto, so to speak, roots. And then you have this larger class, 80% at least, living in poverty, and, and they speak and they speak Creole. Us, when we were back in Haiti, we never got to write any Creole in the classes. In fact, it was all French. In fact, you were punished uh, for using Creole. In fact, my older brother, who was in the kids' classroom, the report card bent Creole alongside weapons. So there was a line saying, no weapons in the school. The next line, no Creole in the school. That you teach children, and actually adults as well, much better when you use the mother tongue. And it is, not to forget science, you, to teach, you want to know what someone knows, and you use what they know to teach them what they don't know. And when it comes to literacy, you get one chance to learn it well. You know? So the first time you learn to read and write, if you do it in the wrong language, then you're handicapped for the rest of your life. So those kids in preschool in Haiti were learning to read and write in French when they don't know French. That handicapped them for the rest of their lives. On this graph, you have third graders reading 20 words a minute in average. And then on this graph, this is the LKM readers, they read 60 words a minute, right? And, and the key difference is that those kids are using a hodgepodge of French and Creole from the very beginning. Those kids, they only use Creole. And, the, and what you can see is that the results are much, much better, three times better, than the kids in the world next to and, and, and they are more than to show it. But this is a clip about those kids doing math in uh, Creole. This was the third time using computers to play this mapping and it was the third time ever. And now I can take a look at anyone whether the kids would have become so passionate if it wasn't French. There's no way that would have There's an issue of, of books. So if you're going to use Creole for education, um, what about what those kids are going to be? Now, but in the mass of kids. Now, what I've been doing in Matenwa, in Nagonal, is to have kids write their own books. Because this is, this is true, that there is a lack, there is a dearth of, of good uh, books in Creole. Um, actually, not, not only for literacy, but in all domains. Um, but one way to deal with it at the primary level is to have kids write their own books. And then, when it comes to university, so there was a, a slide um, I was born mentioning that at the university level, there is zero materials in Creole, which is pretty much true. Um, so, but again, one way to go around that, now there is always online resources being created of the sort that with the Haiti uh, Lab is itself uh, thinking about. And one can use that actually to make Creole materials at a very wide, very wide scale. But the, the key point is that in order to change the current situation, you have to produce materials in Creole, okay? So we're going to see what that might look like. Now, now this is one of these books that, that kids are producing for kids, right? So as you can see, this is a, a, a third grader, I think, in Matemois. And she, she writes a book about um, donkeys. Okay, the book is called um, Why Donkeys Are Useful. Now, it's that time, you know, and, and, and really, that the kids are using the everyday 
they like to produce these books, and they love it. There's another book called uh, Little Pig Was Singing, and it's a book about this kid eating the food. There's this thing on the cemetery, and the fact that there's a pig, they eat the pig, and then the kid, the pig starts singing in the tummy. You know, I used to have beautiful stories. The kids just love sharing them with the family. And, and, and they send the stories to the US to actually have this little boys school. Uh, it's part of this network of, of kids writing books for each other. Actually, I know boy right here, um, Noriel. And, and they just love this whole process of um, writing for each other. From the very beginning of Haitian history, language education has been used um, for exclusion and then to create and transmit inequities in Haiti. And actually, I, I want to insist that Haiti is not exceptional in that regard. Um, what Haiti does, because of its very dramatic history, it makes its issues even clearer and more stark. Um, but in fact, this idea of language being used as a tool for empire is one that goes back to, actually, uh, this quote is from 1492. 1492 from this uh, linguist, or back then a zoologist, called uh, Nirija. And he wrote this grammatica of, um, of the grammar of Spanish. And that's what he told the queen back then. Please support me because that grammar can, can be used as a tool for empire. Now, if we go to the history of France, you know, which is how they stand, you know, it was, it was written from 1732, he also understood that language can indeed be a tool for empire. And this is a quote from Le Monde, and this is about the time when he was being elected. And he made it clear that, you know, we French, when we go abroad and promote our language, it's not just for because language has economic and political <coughs> power. When the French say go to Haiti and help create schools where French have to be used or create programs for uh, conversion education, there is an agenda there that we have to understand as Haitians. We have to understand that it's a tool for economic power and political power. We have this traffic of goods from the West Indies to Europe, which was impossible because the Africans of Africa to the West Indies were considered as basically um, engines, they were not human beings. Therefore, the languages had to be uh, viewed as lesser. And which can see very clearly, if you look at the map where Creoles are spoken, what you see is that all Creoles are spoken around the equator. Basically, the term Creole tracks um, the history of colonization. Linguistically, Asian Creoles pretty much like French or English in terms of how it evolved, historically, but also those instructions. Uh, if you take the litmus test, the, the criteria that people have applied to define the Creole, then English would count more as a Creole than, say, Haitian Creole. So English would have our Creole, Haitian Creole. Produced by Duke University. Online at duke.edu.